my Scorpio friends. Welcome to my channel. My name is Terry Hunter. I'm an intuitive astrologer, and I'm here today with your October 2024 monthly horoscope. These horoscopes are based on whole sign Western astrology. So when I'm talking about Scorpio, I'm referring to Scorpio rising as dictating the landscape of the chart. This is also applicable to Scorpio sun, Scorpio moon. And if you have three or more personal planets in the sign of Scorpio, this video is for you as well. When I refer to a day and a time, it is based on the Pacific time zone. So please adjust for your location. The month is going to start with the last eclipse of 2024. It is a new moon solar eclipse in the sign of Libra. Libra is your 12th house. That is a very karmic house and offering you an opportunity to plant the seeds for something new, something that you may dream about. We're going to see Jupiter retrograde in Gemini, and that is your eighth house of transformation and other people's money. And we're going to see Pluto go direct in your third house and leaving that house, moving into your fourth house in November. So the last few uh, moments that Pluto spends in Capricorn will really start to uh, rewrite your thinking process, hopefully. Uh, all right, let's jump in and I'll show you the chart. Okay. So the month starts off with Mercury and the sun conjunct the south node in Libra, your 12th house of it's your ancestral soul history. It's a house where it's often termed the house of self uh, undoing the house of uh, karmic connections. It is the house of the invisible here. The south node is really um the conversation is about old patterns and patterns of giving up my individuality or giving up my voice or giving up my opinion. And I say my voice and my opinion because of Mercury's conjunction, Mercury ruling communications, the way I think, the way I speak. Um, this conversation has um, been growing as the sun and Mercury were already conjunct at the end of September with the South Node. Now we're going to have an opportunity to plant the seeds on the second for a whole new way of thinking and a whole new way of experiencing. And in many ways, um, finding some sort of peace and harmony with your journey up until now. And when I say peace and harmony, I, harmony, I sort of feel it like it's a reconciliation. And I've looked at the experiences and I've extracted wisdom from them. So let's go to the second where we are going to see at 11.49 a.m. Oops, thank you. Our eclipse is at 10 degrees of Libra, conjunct um, Mercury at 11 degrees of Libra. This to me is very significant because it just supports the idea of planting the seeds for more harmonious, peaceful interactions and involving being aware that my thoughts are things and that my thoughts literally kick in the law of attraction. Whenever you see a series of ones, spirit is alerting you that your thoughts are manifesting very quickly and to be mindful of what those th thoughts are. And while Venus isn't necessarily having a conversation with this new moon, she is also at 11 degrees in your first house. Uh, she's a little challenged here. She's in detriment, but I think this is where she's getting to really think about what has power and control over how money and sex affect her. And when I say sex, I mean intimacy and how that affects one's confidence, one's self-worth. And there's a lot of deep psychological things that happen in, in the sign of Scorpio. And being a Scorpio, you're already pre-wired to look under the surface. So this new moon is offering you an opportunity in its square to, Mer to Mars over here in Cancer in your ninth house to really start to plant the seeds for being brave in moving forward, not only with potentially new philosophies and new ideologies, but the ninth house is also a house where we see business and commerce, where we see potential expansion and wealth. So this this 
Mars energy could potentially be feeling conflicting. Mars is not in strong energy in Cancer. It's in fall. But at the same time, this is about being brave to go into that emotional body. There, Cancer is a sign where we nurture. We nurture not only others, but we also nurture ourselves and we heal. And so here I'm really feeling like there's this push pull between what I have experienced and what I want in the way of moving my story forward and also giving my soul an opportunity to experience something more aligned to my truth. And then having this kind of conflicting feeling in my ninth house of, is it possible? Because Mars is very impatient. And Mars wants to move very quickly. And in Cancer, it cannot do that. It has to slow down and sort of surrender to the ebb and the flow of the ocean and the emotions that we see represented in, in our emotional body. So I think this is a really powerful dynamic. And I think that this is an opportunity as also to constructively deal with any anger or frustration or um, resentments that may be, you know, lingering. So this is a very, very powerful new moon. Um, I also want to mention in case you're new to astrology that an eclipse has a six month influence. So what we see is the eclipses will bring in faded people, events, situations, and dynamics to offer the human to make a choice from its soul's voice. And so that's why these are so important. And in the sign of Libra, we're going to look for peace and harmony and diplomacy and a sense of individuality within my cooperative uh, relationships, within my, uh, my marriage, within my professional relationships, and within how I view um, the opportunities for peace and harmony. Like sometimes... With having Libra be your 12th house, it could potentially be where you don't always see the opportunity and you might have to go in and feel the opportunity. Let's move on to the seventh where we're going to see uh, Venus in your first house making a trine aspect to Mars. And this is kind of feels very yin and yangy to me because Mars and Venus are both challenged in their energy. And so in this, there's a bit of a surrender. The trine makes me feel uh, the surrender comes from a willingness to see where potential frustrations or even wanting to move too quickly through an emotional dynamic. Okay, I acknowledged it. It's over. I'm done. It may not be as simple as that. So here, I think that this trine to Venus is offering sort of a softness to this energy in your first house. It's like being more patient with the ebb and the flow of emotions or even potentially emotions that spike up. We see that Venus and Mars and um, Saturn are in a grand trine. And the most of this was happening earlier in the month. And yet at the same time, Saturn is offering us this awareness as we're moving forward in a more, in a way that offers the reward now. The review that Saturn's doing in Pisces, your fifth house of romance, of your self-expression, of your enjoyment, your fun, your entertainment, and, and how you are received for, when I say received, how you allow yourself or perceive others allow you to express yourself. I think this is important. Saturn's retrograde is never easy, but here we're having a review of our self-worth, how we hold on to anger and resentment, and giving us an opportunity to, to extract the reward from it. And I think this is further evidenced by Pluto um, in these very last degrees of your third house. Now, Pluto is at 29 degrees, 38 minutes. The 29 reduces down to an 11. The 38 reduces down to an 11. And Pluto has been at that degree again since the beginning of the month and uh, during the eclipse. So this is echoing even more succinctly for me that my thoughts are things and that being mindful of that, we also see that Neptune is at 28 degrees, making a favorable aspect both to Pluto and Uranus. And that gives you an opportunity in many ways to liberate yourself from old dynamics or old things that, that have 
tripped you up from moving forward. That's the way I want to put, put it. Now we're going to see on the ninth, um, we're going to see Jupiter go retrograde in your eighth house. And this is very significant because Jupiter is going to retrograde until February 4th, 2025. We're looking at Gemini as the representing our thoughts, our things, echoing back to the eclipse where Mercury was conjunct the eclipse. There's a real opportunity to transform your thoughts, but there's also a willingness or must there must be a willingness to allow for the expansion. Jupiter is also in detriment. So we've got quite a few planets. The sun is in, in detriment. Uh, Mars is in fall. Venus is in detriment. Jupiter's in detriment. Saturn's not in the best place uh, normally, being an emotional Pisces. So here, what we're looking at is these planets in in a in a vibration that is asking all of them to sort of slow down and work with a new landscape, you know, to take their time. So Jupiter's retrograde is going to be very much about you know, am I letting my everyday activities, am I letting the things from the media, from the journalism, from, you know, those those little bits of information, am I allowing them to form my opinions, to, to have power and control over me? Um, and when we're looking at Jupiter, we're looking at business and money and commerce. That's in the eighth house as well. That's represented. It's your natural house of that you rule. So here, I just feel like this whole retrograde is going to be offering, Jupiter's offering expansion by slowing down, looking at the details, rethinking even maybe some of the communities that you're potentially marketing in and maybe expanding that as well. This Jupiter retrograde, again, is going to go on until February. So as we go through the holiday season and things naturally sort of feel like they slow down, this could also support an expansion moving into 2025. That's the way I want to put it. Now on the 11th, we're going to see Pluto move direct in, um, but I'm actually going to go to the 12th. And we see that Pluto is still at 29 degrees, 38 minutes, echoing transformation of thought. Pluto is your ruling planet. When you're a Scorpio rising, you've come into this earthly experience for transformation and transformation and understanding about the dark side of the human experience and how it affects and manipulates us. So here you're seeing where your thoughts have been manipulated through power and control or through things that you may not even be aware of, you know, uh, little old sayings like money doesn't grow on trees. And, you know, if you don't work hard, you're not worth anything. There's kind of like, you know, the, there could be a, a big resurgence and awareness of that. And as Pluto moves into your fourth house, really liberating you from the, any energies in your upbringing, in your life up until now that aren't allowing for the authentic expansion of your uniqueness and individuality. Okay, now let's go to the 13th where we're going to see Mercury enter your first house. Oh, let me go a little later in the day. This is significant because um, Mercury is starting to come into a conjunction with the Shapley attractor. We see Mercury right now. Oh, we have the wheel Um. Um, the natural wheel. There's the Scorpio energy. This is actually your first house. Now, as Mercury enters this, um, this conjunction with the Shapley attractor, this is going to, again, echo back to the um, eclipse, giving you an opportunity to really look at some of your more habitual thoughts, you know, it, even maybe noticing things that are not serving you and being willing at this point to release any false attachments. When we get to two degrees of Scorpio, any personal planets in your natal chart that are within five to 12 degrees of that point are significant in part of your life path is identifying where you're giving up your power, where again, there are false attachments to things that don't serve you or things that are no longer, uh, 
applicable or or relevant. I think that's important. So this is going to come into play. And then when we go to the 17th, just happens to be my birthday. We have a full moon at 426 AM. And this is, oops. This is a full moon at 24 degrees of Libra, which means that the moon is on the fixed star Spica. Spica is the voice of angels. It's a very fortuitous uh, point in the stars. And here, I think this is an opportunity to feel, illuminate, and see some of the divinity of the disruptions you've walked through recently. Um, you know, we all know that the world has been a little bit of a, you know, what do they call it? A shit show. <laughs> Um, and we see here during this full moon that we've got a very strong T-square to Mars. Again, Mars is transiting through your ninth house of beliefs, philosophy, and also business and education. But here, I really think this is more about getting in touch with an emotional dynamic. And I hate to use the word release, but I do believe that the illumination that this moon has to offer it can potentially focus in on either lack of taking action or holding on to old things that are not working for you, angers, frustrations, resentments, stories that come from decades before. And the angels are very much asking you to get out of your earthly body as the, the square from the moon and Chiron. This is pretty significant because Chiron represents that wound that can be transformed into a gift and that's what I think this illumination has to offer. We also see that Venus is at the very last degree of, of your first house, and she's going to enter your second house, giving her an opportunity to really enjoy uh, expanding. And I want to offer it this way because there are points in Sagittarius, which is your second house of money and of using your own skills that can be very fortuitous for you as well in creating the wealth and the dynamics that you need. But there is a strong uh, energy of, of being willing to see, where's my cursor? Um, I can't find my cursor. Come here, little cursor. There's a strong energy really here of being aware of how Mars is, you know, quickness, brashness, the more challenging sides of Mars, because I'm not feeling bravery here. I'm feeling frustration, not only from the T-square, but just from Mars having to be spending these last two months in such an emotional house. And Mars is not really interested in that. Mars wants to get on with it. And part of getting on with it is addressing the emotional body as it is the manifesting factor. Okay, let's go now to... The 22nd, where we will see the sun have its conjunction with the Shapley attractor. So the sun goes into your first house and it will start being your birthday solar return. So happy birthday, my Scorpios. But what we'll see here is that, oh, I moved a little too. Got to go a little later in the day. Let's try 6 p.m. Okay, so now we see the sun is... Uh, approaching that Shapley attractor. So what we see is the series of epiphanies. First, uh, you know, Venus last month was looking at how she views money, how she views money in relation to herself, how she views sex and the power and control that can have over a person. And then Mercury was visiting with this sort of, you know, almost revisiting old childhood thoughts and habits or philosophies that have been given to me. And hopefully, you know, if not releasing them, integrating them, deciding when they're useful and when they're not. And now the sun is approaching this point, which is about releasing sort of other people's opinions of my drive, my ego, my intentions, what I want to create. As we move forward as a society, technology is going to give the individual a much larger platform for self-expression. So, and, and potentially to make resources as a result of that. And I think that, that this is part of the process of the South Node going through Libra, your 12th house is releasing those, those old stories 
that um, have haunted you. And it, sometimes for Scorpio, the the story is that you're not cooperative. You're too brooding. You're too intense. You're too, you know, you're not light enough. You're not easy breezy. But at the same time, I think it's because you are so intuitive that some of the darker sides of, um, of the human experience reveal themselves under false light, you know? Um, and I say that false light because sometimes you can feel someone manipulating you through their, their love or their giving. So that could very well come up. Now we're going to see that Saturn and Venus are in a square here. And that's, where is my cursor? It's giving me so much. Um, oh, they're, she's not showing up yet. Hold on. Let me go to the 25th because I think this is fairly significant in the sense of Venus wanting to, um, Venus will, in while Venus is in Sagittarius, she enjoys the expansion. She enjoys learning new things. She feels smart there. She feels a sense of inspiration. And Saturn square is reminding her that everything that she's creating is built on her relationship with source energy. And it's important to maintain that as the platform. So as she approaches the Shapley attractor, where she's able to attract the resources that she needs, Saturn is going to be, that's at 14 degrees. Saturn's going to be extremely uh, intentional about being setting a schedule of connection with your team. So every morning getting up and maybe you're in the shower and you're declaring to your team in, in, you know, in spirit, thank you for bringing me that great job I want, or that partnership that I want, or the sense of security with resources that I want, or, you know, getting into the school that I want that there's a potential there. There is such a strong dynamic for me as an intuitive where spirit is encouraging me to use the planets so that the human can recognize their co-creations instead of feeling like things are happening to them. So as Saturn uh, moves back to 12 degrees of Pisces and sort of stations in the sky, we're going to feel this tension between old history and old stories, but also the idea that those stories, we can keep the, the the framework of them and then renovate them moving forward. Again, Pisces is your fifth house of romance. Venus loves uh, love, obviously, and she really enjoys herself. And so if for some reason you have thought, Scorpio, that you would like to birth a version of your own creativity in a place where you could potentially create resources at first it may feel a little scary but saturn encouraging you to get, make a routine make a you know set up some sort of framework to start the building process and that's i think going to offer reward as saturn moves forward never easy transits with saturn always a little bit challenging because saturn holds our feet to the fire once we've made a decision and wants us to continue that line of building so it's important to know what you're building and why you want to build it okay Now I'm just quickly going to go to the end of the month. I'll go to the 30th. And we see that the, I think the aspects have kind of quieted down. We're always going to see the nodes in um, an opposition of some kind, but the planets have dispersed a bit and a lot of them are coming out of, um, out of like Venus is no longer in detriment. Jupiter obviously still is. Mars is about to move into Leo where it will feel much more cozy and comfortable. So it feels to me like the end of the month sort of um, things kind of relax. Now I want to offer it this way. They may relax within ourselves because some of us have reconciled some of our choices coming up. We know the United States is in a election year that's unprecedented. And so when I look at this last day or so of the of October, it feels as if, yes, there are challenges in certain regards. We can see Mercury as opposing Uranus. Uh, but at the same time, there's a feeling of a little bit of air because all the planets have a little bit of room to breathe. And it just might be because we've all, we're all preparing for the next phase of whatever is coming. 
uh, in the way of outside influences. And we are spiritually connected to our truth. And while it has not been easy to implement, at the same time, it feels as if that's where we we find our greatest um, comfort. And having the the eclipse in your 12th house, um, I just feel gives you an opportunity to plant the seeds more now than ever before for a strong connection with your team, with your um with those that watch over you that you can't necessarily see or feel uh, with your five senses, but rather that inner knowing that just feels right. So it's a big, it's a big time for humanity. There's a lot of things going on. You know, Pluto takes 248 years to go around the Zodiac. So it has not been in Capricorn since the American revolution and at that time in history, there were other revolutions going on. So we are going to feel um, a renewal of some kind, and this is preparing us for it. All right, Scorpio, that's it for me for uh, October 2024. My name is Terry Hunter. If you found value in the video, please like, please subscribe, please share. And I'll be back in November with your November monthly. See you then. Bye-bye.